You know, one of the most common issues I see in logistics is people running out of warehouse space. And very often what they do is they start planning to move to a much bigger warehouse or they start renting additional warehouse space. That isn't always the best thing to do and I'll explain why coming right up. So why is it that people are always running out of warehouse space? You know, I was having a couple of conversations this week uh, around warehousing and, and uh, industrial property. Um, and uh, I was talking to some property experts and they were quite surprised when I said, you know, I think the useful life of most warehouses is probably only five to seven years. And they're going, really? Because, you know, we're building them and we're renting them out to people um, and we're trying to get 10 year leases and things like that. Well. Warehousing needs change fairly quickly. Um, and we came to the conclusion that really the only warehouses where people sort of tend to be locked into them for 10 and 20 and 30 years are very specialized warehouses with lots of capital equipment in them. So think of you know high bay cold storage warehouses and things like that. Your average FMCG warehouse, fast moving consum consumer goods, tends to need updating at least uh, probably every five years ago, five years or so. And why is that? Well, because product ranges are changing, um, sales levels are changing, there's acquisitions going on, uh, and the space that the warehouse space that was okay for today very rarely lasts more than about five years in my experience. So generally, I mean, people aren't moving warehouse every five years, so what are they doing? Well, very often they're renting additional warehouse space. Uh, and that's additional costs and it's additional complexity and deciding what to store where and you know it all just gets very messy so what we were talking about this week uh, on the topic of warehousing was what do people do when they're starting to be concerned about running out of space so that's what i want to talk about this week and it doesn't you don't always have to move so as soon as you start thinking that you might be running out of warehousing capacity, you need to start looking at your options. Now let me just put up this sort of triangular diagram here behind me, because this illustrates how we go through a warehouse design and some of the things that you might consider looking at. So some of the key elements on the left hand side there, we've got technology, and that's around the different types of storage media that you're using. So what is storage media? It's the racking, it's the shelving, it's the you know cantilever racking, the adjustable pallet racking, all of that storage media that you're using to actually store the product. And sometimes you can use different media and actually squeeze in more product. Uh, what about the levels of automation? That's another thing that you can be thinking about on the technology front. And there's some really cool automation coming up, which I'll, I'll mention. Then in terms of the layout on the right hand side of the uh, triangle, there the layout really comes down to two things. It's, it's the throughput, so how many items are passing through the warehouse, you know, cases, orders, pallets, whatever, and what's the storage capacity of the warehouse. So immediately there's something you can do if you're capacity constrained, and I would say look at what you're storing. Okay, so from a couple of points of view, maybe do some ABC analysis and see if there's some really slow moving product or obsolete product that's clogging up the warehouse. And most warehouses have got that, to be honest. The difficulty is getting the CFO or, or someone else to write off that product or to approve you know, a garage sale, as we call them here in Australia, you know, a big discount sale to get rid of it. But most warehouses have a lot of stock in there that shouldn't be there. So first of all, see if you can clean that out. Then maybe involve the inventory management people um, and look at the stock levels that you're holding. Can you actually adjust those? So perhaps you're actually holding too much you know, in terms of number of weeks or months of cover. So perhaps you could reduce the stock holding a little bit. So that, you know, that's a couple of things that you really got to look at first off. Um, at the bottom of that triangle, we've got the processes in the warehouse. So the inbound processes and the outbound processes. Processes themselves aren't necessarily going to help you free up capacity, but we'll talk about a couple of those as we go through as well. So first things to look at, do we actually need to hold everything that we've got? And are we holding too much of some of the products? Let's just move on a little bit and I want to talk about automation. So you see this fancy sort of two by two matrix here. 
And this is a matrix that we use in our consulting work to look at the levels of automation and so on in warehouses. And if you look at that on the uh, upright axis, we have you know the number of lines being processed per day going from low to high, and it's up to about 100,000 lines per day uh, at the top of that. And then along the bottom, the number of products or the number of stock keeping, stock keeping units that we're holding. And the higher the number of stock keeping units, the higher the number of lines we're processing, that lends itself to much, more, much greater levels of automation. Uh, and you'll see up there top right sort of narrow aisle systems and A-frames and things like that, goods to person. All of those things can help reduce uh, the amount of footprint that are being used in the warehouse. Let's just move on a little bit. And on this slide, I've got this U-shaped flow diagram of a typical warehouse. So most warehouses tend to be U-shaped flow. Uh, we've got other uh, videos talking about the different types of layouts, but let's just focus on this one. Here we've got product coming in in the receiving area, it's going into storage, and then out through the dispatch area. And you can see this is what one of our guys, Mel, Mel uh, Walker, calls a triadic warehouse because it's split into three zones. We've got the fast-moving products closer to receiving a dispatch. We've then got the medium-moving products and the slow movers right down the back of the warehouse. The reason, of course, we do that is to reduce the, uh, the amount of distance traveled by people picking the product. So why am I showing you this? Well, this is a fairly typical warehouse layout. We might be able to actually just adjust the distances between the racking. And um, so if we have a look at that, if you're using normal sort of adjustable pallet racking, I'm no great sort of expert in materials handling, but typically you might have um, you know, 3.2, 3.5 metre aisle widths, pallet to pallet, so that you've got space for the forklift trucks to turn. Uh, one of our clients recently, um, one of our warehouse specialists worked with them, and they started moving all of the racks closer together, and they got down to, I think, uh, 2.3 metre aisles. And how did they do that? Well, because they were using machines like this, which are uh, articulated forklifts. So they can drive into the aisle and, and turn the front fork part of the vehicle to pick up the pallets. A bit like a turret truck, but a lot easier to use. Um, very efficient. The, uh, the operators apparently love them. They're not too difficult to use. Uh, very similar to a normal counterbalance truck. But, of course, what you can do, you imagine if we look at that um, warehouse diagram again, we've got, what is it, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 rows of racking in that warehouse. If they're all three and a half metre aisles and we start reducing them down to, say, 2.4 or something like that, we're going to fit in two or three more rows. And that's actually what happened with one of our clients very recently here in Sydney, where they had quite a small warehouse. It was about 3,500 square metres. But they owned it and they didn't want to move and they were just clogged up and didn't have enough space in the warehouse. Uh, and, and so what our specialist recommended was a very simple fix. Let's just narrow the aisles. We'll get some different forklifts so we can operate in narrower aisles and we can fit in more rows of racking. And that actually, and they went a little bit higher as well, that increased their storage capacity by 30%. So imagine, you know, if you're running out of space in your warehouse and you're thinking, you know, what do we do? We're going to have to move. We're going to have to rent additional space. Simple things like that can get you as much as 30, 35 percent extra capacity in your warehouse. And the warehouse manager who was doing this, a really smart guy, he's been doing it for years, the operation didn't even miss a beat because what he was doing at the weekends was he would get the racking company in and a, and a few of his staff on overtime and they would empty a couple of racks, they'd move them to the closer sort of uh, aisle dimensions, then put the product back in and they'd do a few each weekend and I think over a couple of months they completely re-racked the warehouse and you know 30 percent more capacity and no problem at all with the operations. So do consider that. It's a very simple thing I know but you can actually get um, a lot more space back in your warehouse. Um, maybe additional different types of storage media. So if, if perhaps if you have a lot of carton picks that you're doing and you're picking from pallets, you might want to use things like this. We've got uh, some pictures here of carton live storage or um, you know, uh, pallet live storage. So these sorts of things can help you get more capacity in. You might want to go to double deep or drive in racking, all those sorts of things. Uh, if you want to know more about that, talk to one of our warehouse specialists. But all I'm pointing out here is that different types of storage media will actually allow you to get more into that warehouse cube. One to think about if you've got lots of small parts, spare parts or small SKUs, carousels, they're a fantastic 
um, use of the cube in a warehouse. Uh, if you've never seen carousels, I'll, I'll put a link below so you can see some of those operating. But it's basically, uh, imagine a huge vending machine <laughs> that might be you know five meters high and it's got shelving systems that rotate around and you basically just tap in the product that you want and that shelf system presents itself to the picker. You can pick that product and then the next shelf will come around and so on. Fantastic. They're not great for very fast picking, um, but for slower moving items, brilliant. You can pack so much more into your warehouse. So there's another way you can get some warehouse capacity back. So we've talked about different storage media, maybe different aisle widths. Um, the other thing you could do is actually put in picking modules. So again, depending on your product type or um, you know, how much space is being taken up by the actual picking operation, you can do multi-level picking modules. And there's a couple of uh, pictures of some here where they've got conveyor systems coming down from the upper levels, but you can really condense your pick faces and picking activity maybe on a mezzanine uh, and actually recoup a lot of space that way. Um, we've recently put up some great videos on some new technology, so I'll just mention a couple here if you haven't seen them. So here we've got a robot picking some um, little bottles of product uh, with a suction cup. Um, probably in a sort of FMCG or this looks like a pharmaceutical warehouse. We've got, got some Advil in there. Um, so those sort of products, very easy for uh, robots to be able to be picking those. Um, I'll put a, Again, I'll put a couple of links below because one of our team, Mal Walker, has been going to the um, ProMat Materials Handling Exhibition in the US every year and he always comes back with some videos of the latest technology. So make sure you have a look at those. So he's got you know video uh, demonstrations of all these different products. Uh, we've got some task to person picking here. Uh, this is where little robots follow the picker around and basically light up and say, you know, put two of those in this tote and two of those in this tote. Um, we've got some mobile shelving. Um, a lot of people know about this sort of technology because I believe Amazon are using it. So instead of having racking systems, uh, this is actually complete shelf systems which are being lifted up on top of a little robot and the whole shelf system is being brought to the picker. The picker can do the picking and then the whole shelf system gets taken away. So this is a really interesting element for warehouse design in the future because there is no pallet racking. There's just these shelf systems and look at the height of the ceiling there. You don't need big high buildings. So I think what we'll be seeing with this sort of technology is multi-level buildings. So maybe here's a thought. If you've got, um, you know, six metre high storage in your warehouse, maybe you should be putting a mezzanine floor in and, and having two levels and using this sort of technology. It's probably cheaper to move, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so these, these sorts of things are getting very high density storage because these storage systems can all just be, you know, parked at the back of the warehouse. They don't need aisles or space between them. And these little robots are just going in and pulling out the storage systems as required. So some great use of technology there uh, to actually improve capacity. Again, uh, whilst we're just talking about technology, um, here's a picture of a, a cobot doing some picking. Um, and if you're wondering what a cobot is, it's a collaborative robot. So the robot technology has got to the point now where it's safe uh, for humans to be working next, next to the robot and the robot slows down if the human, human gets close or if they get very close it will stop. Uh, so very safe to do um, and you know, can be working alongside humans and very often the humans are doing the awkward picking and the robots are just doing the really simple stuff. So all of this sort of technology can help reduce the footprint of course. Um, let's just now have a look at um, a warehouse layout. This is a 3D that uh, one of our guys, Mal Walker, did. Um, and this is just an illustration of how you can get more capacity into a warehouse. This is an example of a, a client warehouse where they just needed some more space. So basically the product has been rearranged in the warehouse to make better use of the space. Uh, additional racking has been put along the walls. Uh, some of the aisle widths, if you look to the right of this diagram, some of the aisle widths have been brought in a little bit to get extra rows of racking in. But the thing I wanted to bring your attention to is that big mezzanine area right there in the middle. So very often where sort of picking and dispatch operations are taking place, there is very poor use of the height of the warehouse and mezzanines are great for doing that. Uh, here's another sort of side on view of that where you can see the different levels and we've got two pick two levels of picking there on that mezzanine and here's a close-up diagram of that mezzanine so you can imagine there we've got some small binning where people are doing the picking we've got the ground level and the first level and then all the sort of um, 
orders that are picked on the upper level are coming down that conveyor system to the bottom level. These sorts of things are great for improving the density of the picking operation in a warehouse. So great for getting space back into your warehouse. So look, there's a, a, just a quick run through on what to do if you're running out of warehouse space. There's loads more videos here on the channel about warehousing, so do have a look at those. But just to recap, um, if you're running out, if you think you're going to be running out of space in your warehouse, Sure, you might need to move, you might need to re, uh, rent additional space, but start off by looking at what you're actually storing and is there any dead stock there that you can get rid of. Then have a look at the stock that you are holding. Are you actually holding too much of it? And talk to the inventory planners and so on about that. Uh, potentially then you could relay racking to make aisles narrower, maybe using mezzanines to claw back some of that space and get higher density. Don't forget carousels for small parts, they're really good. Um, and uh, you know, utilizing different storage methods is really going to help you reduce that overall um, use of space within the warehouse. And remember that you know that case study of the client that we were working with very recently in Sydney, where they got thirty percent more storage into the warehouse just by relaying the racking. So. The key message, if you're running out of space, you don't necessarily have to move. There's some things that you, you could do first because moving a warehouse is very disruptive to the business. Okay, so if you've got any comments or questions on that, you know how it works, do uh, ask your questions down below. We're more than happy to, uh, to provide answers to any questions that come in. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, do like, do, do make your comments, do share. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do please subscribe because we have videos coming out every week, generally on a Wednesday. So just hit that red subscribe button uh, and I think that bell button if you hit that you'll get an automatic notification when our next videos come out so thank you very much for your time I hope you got some value out of that video and look forward to seeing you next week